to the Most High God. Honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to all of you, my Father's children. It is good to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean that. I've been in a lot of places, but it's always good to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. I've been in good places and bad places, but it's better to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen? I, I don't know about you, but there's, a, there's an excitement in my spirit. There, there is an excitement and, and as we finish our journey through Joshua I want to take you to probably the most exciting verse in the book of Joshua if you have your Bibles turn to Joshua chapter 24 and we want to lift up verse 31 Joshua the 24th chapter and the 31st verse when you find it let me know by saying amen if you're still looking let me know by saying wait on me amen I don't mind waiting because we need to see what the word of the Lord says Joshua chapter 24 and verse 31 are we all there anybody still looking Amen. Uh, it's, it's funny, I use my electronics too, and I could turn to it faster than my electronics keep up. <laughs> but the electronics makes me lazy. To, amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 31. The Bible says, And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Is that not what your Bible says? By the power of the Holy Spirit from the aid of your prayers for a topic I want to use, pass it on. Take your seats and pray with me for just a little bit. Eternal God and our Father, our Lord and our Savior. It is preaching time now. And as always, Master, we need the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Father, first and foremost, I pray that grooms decrease, that Christ might increase, that your name be magnified, your people be edified, and in the end, some soul might be saved. I ask a fresh anointing on this earthen vessel that you remove every obstacle and distraction, that you would cleanse me from the innermost parts of my being to the outermost parts of my soul, that I might be a clean conduit of your word, that it will flow through freely and unencumbered. I pray that you bless your people, that your word will fall on fertile ground, that believers are made stronger and non-believers come into the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Finally, Father, I pray that you rebuke the adversary for this church's sake so that we can do what you've called us to do, and that's make disciples in this land. We give you praise, glory, and honor that you have your way in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pass it on. The book of Joshua is a prototypical book on leadership. 
if you ever really wanted to teach leadership, all you need to do is read the book of Joshua and teach on his life. Because in the book of Joshua, you will find Israel at its best. Uh, the book of Joshua really only records one major failure, failure during the time of Joshua's leadership. Israel understood what success was all about because they followed a great man. Israel understood uh, what God could do because they followed certain principles. Israel understood that as long as I am obedient to God, God will make a way and fulfill all of his promises. Joshua reminds us what we can do if we just simply follow a certain principle. Well, let me pause long enough to remind you what made Joshua such a leadership success. Well, it's a few things, and I want to leave with those things before we move forward. When I think about what made Joshua so great, the first thing I had to come to mind is that Joshua first and foremost had an encounter with God. We remember we talked about how he met the man that had his sworn drawn, and I want us to realize that baby if we're going to be successful on this Christian journey what we really need is an encounter with God all too often we have an encounter with practice all too often we have an encounter with religion all too often we have an encounter with uh, history but every now and again you got to draw on your encounter with God because when history fails you God can hold you up when religion no longer lifts you up God can move your mind your encounter the way God sets the tone for the rest of your life. Uh, Joshua understood uh, that in order to be successful in leadership, uh, I need to know God for myself. Can I preach the way I feel? Uh, the problem that we have is we have too many people in the world uh, that know about God but don't know God. Uh, they know his name, uh, but they have no relationship with him. Uh, you can't have a good leadership uh, unless you're first following God yourself. What made his leadership so successful was Joshua had an encounter with God. The second thing that made Joshua's leadership so successful was Joshua had a holy walk. We might as well say amen. You need one of the problems that we have in the modern church. Uh, we'll follow popularity before we follow holiness. Uh, we'll follow somebody's pocketbook uh, before we follow righteousness. Uh, we'll follow somebody's reputation uh, before we follow who they really are. But when I read the book of Joshua, there is nowhere where God had to chastise him. God chastised Moses, uh, but he didn't chastise Joshua. There's nowhere in the Bible where God had to call him out of sin. Uh, it was Joshua's holy walk. Uh, that gave the people confidence to follow him. Uh, what am I trying to tell all of us? Uh, if you want somebody to follow you, uh, you need to walk holy uh, because when you walk holy, uh, you represent the God that you encounter. Amen. What made his leadership so important and so powerful? Joshua not only had an encounter with God, Joshua not only had a holy walk with God, but Joshua was obedient to God. You see, I stopped by to tell all of us, uh, we got to recognize that in order to get what God has for us, we got to do what God says, exactly how God says it, and when God says it. We can't put our own spin on anything. Uh, we got to be obedient to God. Uh, can I give you a quick lesson with another lesson? Uh, can you imagine what would have happened to the ark? Uh, had Moses, had, I should say, had Noah changed the specifications? Uh, had he built it his way rather than God's way? Uh, I just believe that he changed just one minute detail. Uh, the ark would not have lasted all of those days if he changed one minute detail the ark wouldn't have had been able to withstand the storm but that's what happened in some of our lives God will give an instruction and we'll change one minute detail to fit our comfort zone but I've learned that partial obedience is total disobedience Joshua said if God said it we can do it if God said the land is ours let's go take it if God says March 7 days uh, let's get to stepping. Uh, if you really want to be successful with God, uh, you got to be obedient with God. What made Joshua's leadership so successful? Not only did he have an encounter with God, not only did he walk holy with God, not only was he obedient with God, but Joshua had a leadership team that was on one accord. Can I say that again? Joshua had a leadership team that was on one accord. 
I said this before, and it's worth saying again. Uh, Joshua learned some great things from, from Moses. Uh, and let me pause long enough to remind everybody, don't follow anybody that don't want to follow anybody. Amen. Let me say it again. Amen. Don't follow anybody that don't want to follow anybody. Because I've learned the best leaders start off being the best followers. Uh, if you want to jump into leadership, then baby, you don't understand what servanthood looks like. Uh, because leadership is not a privilege uh, to be lifted up. Uh, leadership is a servanthood uh, that you might lift the people up. Uh, and Joshua understood uh, by watching Moses what leadership looked like. Uh, and so Joshua built a leadership team uh, based on what Moses had around him. Uh, and the Bible declared uh, that the spirit that was in Moses uh, was in the same spirit that was in his leaders. Uh, can I preach it the way I feel? Uh, nobody uh, had a hidden agenda. Uh, nobody uh, had their own ideologies. Uh, nobody uh, had any divisions or schisms. Uh, Joshua's team uh, understood uh, we got one job and one goal. Uh, one God and one walk. Uh, wherever God leads, uh, that's where we're going. Amen. The unity of Joshua's leadership team made the success for all of Israel. But that wasn't the most beautiful thing. The most beautiful thing transpired in this text. The text reminds us that not only did Joshua have all of this, but what Joshua really had was influence. People will tell you one thing, but their actions tell you something else. Can I talk about us Baptist folk? We'll say one vote with our mouth and another vote with our feet. We'll say we're with you with our words, but our presence says something else. And what Joshua had uh, above everything else, uh, and not only Joshua, but his leadership team, uh, what Joshua had was influence. Uh, can I walk through the text for just a little bit? Uh, because this particular passage says, uh, as long as Joshua lived, uh, and as long as those that served with Joshua lived, uh, Israel followed God. Uh, can I remind somebody that leadership matters? Uh, because my mother told me a long time ago, uh, the speed of the leader is is the speed of the team. Uh, if the leadership is holy, uh, the team will be holy. Uh, if the leadership is following God, uh, the team will follow God. Uh, if the leadership is obedient, uh, the team is obedient. Uh, I stop by to tell you uh, the influence of Joshua uh, and his leadership uh, didn't stop with Joshua. Uh, it impacted the whole clan. Uh, everybody uh, follow God uh, because of good leadership. Uh, everybody uh, walk with God uh, because of good leadership. Uh, everybody uh, decided uh, that whatever Jesus said, uh, that's all right with me. Amen. The text said all of Israel followed God as long as those that served with Joshua were still alive. As long as we had an image to emulate, we had someone to look to. As long as we had somebody that we can visualize, we have a mark to press to. This particular passage shows us that leadership is important and the right leadership is important. But not only is this the most beautiful text, this is also the saddest text in the book of Joshua. Because not only do we need to look at what it says, we need to look at what it don't say. The text says, Israel followed God as long as Joshua lived and those that served him, that outlived him, was alive. As long as there was godly leadership, the people walked with God. But what it doesn't say is that when Joshua died and when the leaders that served with him died, Israel went in a bad direction. We might as well say amen. Amen. What the scripture does not say is that when Joshua laid down his life, closed his eyes for the last time, 
Caleb and all of those that served with him uh, decided to go home and be with the Lord. Uh, now the folk that follow God uh, strayed from God. Uh, can I give you biblical text to prove that I'm right? Uh, when you go to the book of Judges, chapter 17, uh, in verse 8, uh, the Bible says, In those days uh, there was no king in Israel, uh, and every man did uh, what was right in his own eyes. Uh, what transpired uh, from a people that walked with God uh, to being a people ungodly? Uh, what transpired uh, from a people that was holy uh, decided to be unholy? Uh, what transpired uh, from a people that was unified uh, to a people that is now dealing with, with friction uh, and complacency? Uh, what transpired uh, from a people that knew the power of God uh, to a people that walked away from God? Uh, what took place uh, from the time uh, that as long as Joshua lived uh, to the people follow him uh, to where everybody's doing right? Right, what's in their own eyes. Just one generation of people have a totally different result. What happened to Joshua's children and children's children? Because after all, Joshua had a commitment. Joshua said, I don't care what y'all do, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Joshua said, I know there's a world out there that you can follow, but I'm going to trust God. Joshua said, I don't care where you walk. Let me know where we're me, me and my household are walking. We're going to follow God. What are you going to do? What took place to cause the shift of dynamics in the children of Israel's life? Amen. I surmise that maybe the problem is what Joshua learned what his leadership knew was not passed on to the next generation. Don't be so critical. Look around. What happened to Joshua is happening to us. What took place after Joshua has taken place in 2023. The crew that used to worship and serve God have children and grandchildren that barely go to church. What transpired uh, that caused a demise in the way uh, folk walk with God? What transpired uh, to call the people that used to believe in God and lean on his everlasting arm? Uh, now they look at their children and their children barely can give up a prayer. What took place uh, that caused the children uh, that had forefathers that knew what God can do uh, to walk away from the God that brought them all the way? Uh, what transpired? Uh, well, I stopped by to tell you uh, what transpired uh, is we did not pass it on. We start to talk about how the people in this world are crazy and corrupt. They're our people. We talk about how the children don't serve the Lord the way they used to, like we did. They're our children. We'll talk about how church is not a priority to them like it is. To, they're our children. And while it might not be your child directly, it's your child indirectly. Because if your child played with them, they got influence on your child and your child got influence on them. If it's your grandchild, you got a way of encouraging them or discourage them. Baby, before we criticize this generation, we got to understand that we created this generation. The mess that we have is a mess that we deserve. Because I stopped by to tell you what we forgotten to do we forgot to pass it on Amen. three things that we need to pass on and I'm gonna let you go home the first thing that Joshua should have passed on was he had to pass on who God is I don't think we really know who God is anymore because if we knew who he was he would be a priority in our lives. See, the problem that we have is all too often we got a, a skewed view of who God is. Uh, we have a view tainted uh, by what society depicts and not by what the Word of God says. Uh, we have a view skewed by what we've been through uh, rather than who God says he is. Uh, can I preach the way I feel this Sunday morning? Baby, I don't care if you've been through hell and high water. God is still good. Uh, I don't care if folk failed you in the church. Uh, God is still God and Lord of all. Uh, I don't care if mama left you and daddy forgot about you. God says I'll neither believe you or forsake you. We got to stop measuring God by the failure of other folk. We got to remember who God is. Who is God? God is my creator. He made everything including me. Who is God? God is my sustainer. He gave me the air that I breathe and the blood in my veins. Who is God? God is my deliverer. He brought me out of my sin and out of 
my sickness. Uh, who is God? God is my way maker. When my back was against the wall, uh, God had a way. Uh, we got to remember who God is. God is righteous judge. He's going to deal with everybody based on their life. God is eternal king. He's going to govern everybody based on his law of righteousness. God is our blessed hope. He's the only way we can get out of this mess. We got to pass it on. We know who God is, but we got to remind our children who God is. First thing we got to pass on is who God is. The second thing we have to pass on is what God has done. The Bible declared that Joshua reminded the people all that the Lord has done. I think sometimes we forget all that the Lord has done. Sometimes we got to look back on our lives and remember when you didn't have but two morsels of bread, but God fed your whole family. You got to remember all that God has done. Uh, sometimes we got to remember uh, how we struggled just to pay the house note, uh, and now your house might be paid for. You got to give God the glory for all that he has done. Uh, sometimes we got to remember uh, when we were down and out and didn't have a friend, uh, but God had a way uh, of sending somebody by to lift you up. We got to remind folk uh, what all God has done. Sometimes we got to remember uh, when you were just struggling to get through school, uh, but God gave you the wherewithal uh, to endure to the end. You got to remember all that God has done. Uh, sometimes we got to remember uh, that when we were in our sins, uh, it wasn't mama that died. Uh, it wasn't daddy that died. Uh, it wasn't Moses that died. Uh, God looked down from glory, uh, became one of us, uh, and died for us. Uh, we got to remember uh, all that God has done. Uh, and when we remember what God has done, uh, we got to pass it on. The problem that we have is we have not passed on correctly all that God has done. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I be honest? I think we all should live to the best of our ability. I think it's a shame to live beneath your possibility and potential. We ought not walk around with our head hung low acting like we're the scum of the earth. We are the children of a king. We ought to walk around looking like princes and acting like princes and living like princes. But we need to tell the world where I got what I got. Remind them that what you see in me, it was God. It wasn't my intellect. It was God. It wasn't my connections. It was God. It wasn't my ability. It was God. You got to tell the world the reason why you see what you see uh, is because God did it. Our children don't know because we didn't pass it on. Because if they knew, they'd be where you are. Well, one more thing, and we're going home. We got to pass on to our children who God is. We got to pass on our children what he did. But this is not in the text in this particular passage, but it's in Scripture. We got to pass on to our children that God is coming back. You know, that used to be the eternal theme of the church, that one day Jesus is coming back. Uh, but because we have not passed it on, uh, we live like we got tomorrow. Uh, because we have not passed it on, uh, there's no sense of urgency in our lives. Uh, because we have not passed it on, uh, there is no diligence in our walk. Uh, because we have not passed it on, uh, there is no concern or compassion for our fellow man. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you this Sunday morning, uh, Jesus is still coming back. Uh, how do I know? Uh, first of all, the Christ tells me uh, he's coming back. Uh, he died uh, that we might be free. Uh, secondly, the tomb tells me he's coming back. Uh, he rose on the third day uh, with the power in his hand. Uh, thirdly, his voice tells me he's coming back. Uh, he said, uh, I go to prepare a place, uh, and if I go, uh, I'm coming back for you. Uh, I'm so glad uh, the Lord is coming back, uh, and when he comes, uh, I want to be ready. Uh, when he comes, uh, I'm looking forward to his we got to remind our children that Jesus is coming back. And when you pass it on, 
Can I give you a freebie? Not with your words, but with your actions. When we pass it on, they will catch what we're sharing. But if we don't pass it on, we're going to not only lose the children, but we're going to lose their children too. Because if we don't give it to them, then the next generation has no source to get it from. It's time to pass it on that the household of faith will look like what God wants it to look like. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.